May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hear the word of the Lord in Luke chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. When Jesus had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. Dear friends in Christ, How much are your thoughts and decisions and actions influenced by your feelings, your emotions? If Simon Peter and his friends had listened only to their feelings, their emotions, they would have gone home empty-handed. They were tired. They were worn out. They were frustrated. They had put in hours of hard work and had nothing to show for it. Another question. How much are your thoughts and decisions and actions influenced by your circumstances, your situation, the events going on around you? If Simon and his friends had been slaves to their circumstances, They would never have experienced the miracle that Jesus wanted to give them. The fish simply weren't there. They hadn't been there all through the night when fishing was supposed to be good, and they certainly wouldn't be there in the heat of the day. Any fisherman knew that. Feelings and circumstances, emotions and events. Question, where does God's word factor into our thoughts, our decisions, and our actions? Where does God's word factor into that process? Well, Simon Peter and his friends listened to Jesus. They gave him the last word. They did what he said. So what happened? Scripture says they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. They had to call for help from another boat. And both boats were filled with fish and began to sink from the weight of all the fish. Talk about an extravagant miracle. Let's take another look at Simon Peter's words. He said, Master, we've worked hard all night and we haven't caught anything, but, 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 at your word, I will let down the nets. Because you say so, I'll let down the nets. Now, what if he had said it the other way around? What if he had said, Master, I hear you. You tell us to let down the nets. Yeah, but you know what? We've worked hard all night and we haven't caught anything. He would have been giving the last word to his feelings and his circumstances. His decision would have been motivated by emotions and events, not the word of the Lord, and he would have missed the miracle. You and I are tempted to do the same thing. We know the word of God. Thank God we do. What a privilege it is to know the word of God. We hear it. We read it. We can read it in our own language. We have a variety of translations we can choose from. We're free to read it and study it and discuss it without fear of 
arrest or imprisonment or persecution. We're so blessed to have the word of God. But sometimes when the crunch comes, and sometimes even when the crunch isn't coming, we make decisions based on feelings and circumstances, emotions and events. We pay more attention to emotions and events than we pay to the word of God. Listen to how it works. When we give God the first word and give our emotions or events the last word. Are you ready? Jesus says he's always with me. That's the word of God. Jesus said I'm with you always. But I feel so alone. Feelings get the last word. God tells me to forgive. That's the word of God. But I am really hurt right now. Emotion gets the last word. God's word says not to be afraid. But here comes the situation. I'm facing some huge struggles. Situation gets the last word. The Lord wants me to work on my job as though I'm working for him. That's what God's word says. But you know what? My boss is just impossible to please. Circumstance gets the last word. The Bible tells us that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. All sin. That's the word of God. But I feel so guilty. I feel so dirty. So ashamed. Your feelings are getting the last word. What happens when we give the last word to feelings and circumstances, to emotions and events? What happens is we're defeated. What happens is we're stuck because we're walking by sight, not by faith. And when you're walking by sight and not faith, that's a road that leads nowhere good. Now here's what Simon Peter actually said. He said, Master, we've toiled, that is, we've worked hard all night. We've caught nothing, not just a little bit, nothing. A total waste of time and effort. But, at your word, because you say so, I will let down the nets. You see what he's doing? He acknowledged his feelings, he recognized his circumstances, but he gave the final say to Jesus. He took action based not on emotions or events, but on the word of the Lord. Dear friends, we can do this too. All it takes is some mental discipline. Listen to each of the sentences I said before with the clauses reversed so that God gets the last word. I feel so alone. That's your feeling. But Jesus says, he is always with me. Say that with me. I feel so alone. But Jesus says, he's always with me. I'm really hurt right now. But God tells me to forgive. Did you say that with me? I'm really hurt right now. But God tells me to forgive. By the way, do you know when you forgive someone, you're setting a prisoner free? And the prisoner was you. <laughs> Trapped in a prison cell of bitterness and resentment and anger. 
When you forgive, you let it go. You send it away. You say, here, God, you take this. I can't handle this anymore. You deal with this. And you know what? You walk out of that prison cell and you're free when you forgive. I'm facing some huge struggles. But God's word says not to be afraid. Would you read that with me? I'm facing some huge struggles. But God's word says not to be afraid. My boss is just impossible to please. Probably there's no one here that can relate to that one. But but the Lord wants me to work on my job as though I'm working for him. Let's read that together. My boss is just impossible to please, but the Lord wants me to work on my job as though I'm working for him. I feel so guilty, so dirty, so ashamed. But the Bible tells us that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Would you read that with me? I feel so guilty, so dirty, so ashamed, but the Bible tells us that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. What a difference. What a transformation. Now we're walking by faith. That's the road to spiritual victory, and that's what happens when we give God the last word. Think for a moment about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane on the night before he went to the cross. Our Lord and Savior faced the reality of his horrifying situation. He didn't deny it. He faced it. He did not hide his emotions, but he gave the last word to his Father in heaven. Scripture says that he told his disciples, my soul is very sorrowful even unto death. His soul was very sorrowful. He was so sad and troubled, it says. Then it says, he fell face down on the ground. Scripture says his sweat was like great drops of blood falling to the ground. In Hebrews chapter 5, it says that he prayed with loud cries and tears. Loud cries and tears he prayed. And what did he pray? He said, Father, if possible, let this cup pass from me. That cup of suffering and death that awaited him that next day on the cross. In other words, what he was saying is, If humanity can be saved from death and hell by any other way than my having to go to the cross, Father, let it be so. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done, Father. He faced the reality. He expressed his emotions and he gave the last word to his Father in heaven. You know, we don't need to deny our feelings or stuff our emotions. We can acknowledge our feelings for what they are. We can own our emotions. We can express our emotions. But don't give your emotions the last word in your thinking and your decision making. Give God the last word and feel your emotions begin to change. Your feelings will follow your faith. Yes, it's true. Your feelings will follow your faith. We don't need to ignore our circumstances or live in denial. We don't need to dwell in fantasy land. 
Stay informed about what's going on around you. By all means, stay in touch with, with the reality of what's happening. But don't let events dictate your decisions. Give God the last word, and you know what? You will change the reality around you. When one person changes his or her behavior, it changes the situation. This can work for bad. It can also work for very, very good. When one person changes his or her behavior, it changes the situation. People of God, we can do this. We have the Holy Spirit living in us to enable us to do what God is calling us to do. We're not just on our own anymore. The Spirit of God dwells in you. We can give God the last word in our thinking and our decision making. It is really, really simple. But that doesn't mean it's easy. Because life in this fallen world can be very challenging to our faith. Events and emotions can take center stage very quickly. Hard times can tempt us to give up on God or think that God has given up on us. Good times can make us forget about God. What do I need God for? Everything's going good. I'm, I'm fine. It's easy to, to give the last word to events and emotions, isn't it? But don't give up on giving God the last word. Don't give up. And you know what? The next time that you give emotions or events the last word, you can say, oh, I know what's happening here. Yes, that's what I just did. I gave my, the last word to my feelings or I gave the last word to my circumstances. Okay, I'm just going to reverse that now. Work it the other way around in my thinking. You know what's happening. Don't give up. I love the command and promise that's found in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Let's read that together. Let us not grow weary of doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Don't give up. We will reap a harvest. We need to just keep on planting. The proper time will come. You know, it's God's proper time, not ours. It may be today. It may be tomorrow. It may be next year. It may not happen in our lifetime. The fruit, the harvest may come in the next generation or the generations after that. But it will most certainly come. And it will come for sure when we are together forever in heaven. So don't give up. Keep giving God the last word. In your thinking, in your decision making, in your actions. Now, what if you are absolutely exhausted? What if you have no energy left? What if you feel like you have nothing left to give? You're completely depleted. I knew a dedicated Christian leader, now with the Lord, who went through some very, very difficult times in his career, times of great stress and turmoil and pressure. Later in his life, looking back, he told me that during those years, when he would go to bed at night after another very difficult day, he would say this prayer. God, I quit. I'm done with this. I resign. That was his prayer. <sighs> now, Relieved of all his responsibilities, he would go to sleep in peace. Then he said to me, I figured 
that if God woke me up in the morning, that meant he had not accepted my resignation. <laughs> Give God the last word. Master, we've worked hard all night and we haven't caught anything. But at your word, I will let down the nets. May the peace of God that passes all understanding stand guard over our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.